Hi, my name is Tom Perkins. I'm a fellow at JILA. JILA is a research institute between the University of Colorado and NIST. Um, it's located on the campus of the University of Colorado. Um, my research focuses on single molecule biophysics where we use the tools of physics and optics and nanoscience to understand how um, molecules move inside our cells or how they fold. In general, in single molecule biophysics, there's sort of a number of different areas of research that people are excited about. One of which is how motion occurs in our body. How do enzymes move? How, do our, how does our body move? We know that muscle moves, but we're also interested at the fundamental level, some molecule must be pushing against some other molecule. And so what we do, uh, we and others build instruments that can measure these tiny displacements. So uh, there's mechanical motion associated with, let's say, an enzyme moving along DNA as it copies DNA into RNA, or as, RNA polymer, or, or as a ribosome moves along RNA to copy RNA into making proteins, and there's also motion on the scale of how proteins fold. And so two areas of interest in my lab are how to enzymes convert chemical energy into mechanical motion, and another one is how proteins fold. And I think one of the real challenges is all of this happens in sort of a warm, wet environment. What we're trying to do is really high precision measurements on biological molecules, but the challenge is if it's warm and it's wet, it's a really noisy environment. There's browning in motion, there's evaporation, there are a lot of environmental factors that affect our ability to do the measurement. And so what we have to do as a community is come up with ways to how to make really, really precise measurements on one molecule at a time. So the focus of our research um, in the last five years, at least on the AFM side, has been improving our ability to watch proteins fold and unfold to make better measurements. Um, and so these metrological improvements focused on trying to make better measurements of protein folding uh, improve our ability to measure protein unfolding, but it also has an impact on the broader field because if we're improving the ability to do bio-AFM, bio-AFM broadly affects a lot of areas. There are people interested in measuring the mechanical structure of cells because cancer cells are softer than non-cancerous cells. People are interested in understanding the elasticity of the extracellular matrix because induced pluripotent stem cells, IPS cells, differentiate into different things depending on what the extracellular matrix is. And so AFM is used in a wide variety of, of biophysics and bioengineering applications. And to the extent that we can improve the measurement for one aspect, protein folding, and we can do that on a commercial AFM, then those types of improvements can be broadly distributed. So our foray into atomic force microscopy was developing this optically stabilized AFM. This has probably cost us about $2 million and about five years of effort by a team of really talented people. And um, we were very excited about it. Uh, but one of the things that we found out was the positional tip sample stability wasn't the critical problem. That modern commercial AFMs actually have really, really good tip sample stability, and then the problem was really the cantilever, and that if you could improve the cantilever's properties, or improve the detection of the cantilever, that you can generate a series of improvements for bio-AFM that are broadly dis dis distributed, that can be used by a lot of people. And so that's one of the real focuses in our lab, is we want to figure out how to make better measurements, not just for us to use, but for other people to use. And why are we interested in that? Well, we want the, a commercial AFM like this offers ease of use and higher throughput. So we want to be able to not do, just do one measurement or 10 measurements. We want to do hundreds or thousands of measurements. Then we get statistically significant data that allows us to go do things. And so to the extent that we can make thousands of measurements on an individual molecule, we can make more important scientific points. So that drives our desire for uh, throughput and ease of use. But to do so, we want to be able to do it on a commercial AFM. So one of our more recent advances is modifying commercial cantilevers to improve their performance. OK, we want to modify commercial cantilevers as opposed to make our own because uh, it saves us a lot of time and ultimately something that other people can use. And what we use is a tool called a focused ion beam. A focused ion beam is really just sort of sandblasting with atoms. So you basically have a structure like here, you come in with atoms and you cut away the, a, a portion of the cantilever and that falls off. And what we found was when we cut away that flap okay, of the cantilever and brought it down near a surface, that the hydrodynamic drag, the coupling between the cantilever, the fluid, and the surface decreased by a factor of 10. And that gives us a better measurement. Okay. And that gave us a better measurement, but we wanted to make the cantilever softer. So we have these two little thin 
side supports and then we actually sandblasted those to thin those down so that the cantilever became more compliant. Okay, so we got a softer cantilever, we have a cantilever with less hydrodynamic drag, but there was a third feature that we wanted. We wanted high reflectivity. Commercial AFMs use uh, laser beams to detect the position of the AFM cantilever. So if we have a gold coating on the cantilever, okay, we can make a more precise measurement. Only if we can actually keep that gold away from the portion of the cantilever where there's a lot of curvature. So we want, we don't want any gold at the base of the cantilever, but if we have a little bit of gold at the end of the cantilever, we get the benefits of high reflectivity without the damaging effects of gold on the rest of the cantilever. So we developed a process, indeed Matt Bull, an undergraduate uh, developed a process where he writes a little bit of glass using uh, an electron beam at the very end of the cantilever. And this asks acts sort of as a mask to protect the gold when we come back and we do a chemical etch. And then that gold gives us the third key benefit to these cantilevers we developed. We've got lower stiffness, we've got lower hydrodynamic drag, and now we have higher reflectivity. And so these are a great general purpose cantilever that we use all the time now in our research and we think will be broadly enabling in the field. And we hope in the future that you know commercial AFM manufacturers take up these sorts of types of technologies and make them easily accessible to the rest of the field. For our work, and I think for many people in the field, one of the really captivating questions is watching a protein fold. Okay, so we, we can see a state, a protein in state A unfolded or state B folded. Okay, but we think of there's an energy barrier between these and an activation energy going across this barrier uh, usually is a fleetingly fast thing that happens on a time scale of one to 10 microseconds. And so one of the things that we've been working on and other people is trying to improve the temporal resolution of AFM down to the level of a microsecond. If we can measure a protein unfold at a microsecond, instead of there being this invisibly fast transition between unfolded and folded, we can be able to see those intermediates that may be briefly populated only one to 10 microseconds, or even watch the path as a protein folds. And it's the transition state, that, that top of that energy barrier that we think about where all the chemistry happens. So if we can actually visualize that, we think there's a lot of interesting science to detect.